Behind the Shades. And here's a tough question. And sometimes it's hard for me to ask women because a male perspective is so different than the female's perspective. The question that I always want to ask um, someone who has gone through something like that is, would they have a child in the future, knowing what um, that they weren't necessarily ready previously? The one thing I will tell you about that, the mother that I can be now versus the mother I could have been then is a complete 180. And so part of my healing and part of going through all of this and that self-development and that growth was really diving into my own trauma. And what's interesting is that my, my grandmother chose a man to be the father of her children, which was my mother, who was very emotionally unavailable. Her father was emotionally unavailable. So it makes sense that she chose a man that was emotionally unavailable. My mother, like my dad is a great man by all means, but there are very, there are a lot of periods throughout my life where he was physically present, but emotionally unavailable. Had I had that baby, I was making the same choice with the same kind of man. And so when I look at it now, I'm looking at it from a more healed perspective of what I can offer to a child now. And, and if kids are in the, if kids are in the cards, they're in the cards, maybe I'll have them, maybe I won't, who knows. But what I can offer to them now and the type of partner that I can choose to have them with is completely different. And it would be, it would be a vastly different childhood that I would be able to provide. And that's what I look for as well, because I see, I think once you become aware of your childhood, you're like, I don't want this for any child that I'm going to bring into this world. Yeah. And one of the problems that I've experienced because of that, it makes you delay the process, right? Instead of it being like our parents who were, were, were they 20? <laughs> and they're having yeah. kids yeah. and getting married. We're more, okay, 24, 25, 26, 27. I still have that trigger from when I was five years old, 29, 30. And yeah. for a man, it's a little bit different because God willing, I can have kids until I die. Yeah. <laughs> right. For, For a woman, it's a bit different. It's a bit different. Right. So as long as like not impotent, but, you know, it's a little bit different mm -hmm. for the women. So when women go through a situation that's as traumatic as that, because I can just imagine where you're pregnant, you decide, OK, I am not going to carry this to term. That is a big decision regardless of your personality type and then you're 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 at a point where you want to heal from that right like you just mentioned you want to grieve because when you have a miscarriage you're grieving and mm -hmm. you have the people around you right i'm so sorry that's unfortunate yeah things like that but when it's an abortion it's a little bit different it's more of it's a you mm -hmm. issue and you're alone when you're Looking at the trauma of the people you help, I'm pretty sure the grieving period is different, but are they all given a period to grieve when you're dealing with them? I give them that period if they don't. And it's what I notice a lot in people is that people will suppress, people will push aside, people will not face it. And I did that for a little while too. And not even just with the abortion, there's, there's, you know, moments of trauma sprinkled throughout all of our lives, truly. And so when we don't properly grieve those things and work through those things, now you're looking at even manifesting physical illness in your body and you're holding on to this emotion. And, you know, you think about it when you get really angry or when you feel stressed out, how does your body feel? How does your physical health feel? You get a stomach ache, right? You might get a headache. You might start to feel hot or sweat, like you get physical symptoms from, you know, not feeling well emotionally. And so the space that I try to hold people is, or try to hold for people, sorry, is to really let them know it's okay to feel what you need to feel. If you're angry, feel angry. If you're sad, feel sad. If you need to grieve, then grieve, but go in there and do it fully. 
don't push it aside. Don't suppress it. The other thing you have to think is that, you know, when we have a physical ailment, if you break your arm, what are you doing? You're going to the hospital. You're going to get a cast. You're going to get it fixed. You're going to take care of that arm. You're going to take the medication that you need to take. So why is it that when we have an emotion arise, we suppress it or we push it down and we don't care for it? So, and there's a difference between, you know, feeling your emotion and moving through that grief and moving through that trauma and being self-indulgent and just sitting there and sitting in victim mode. I think it's, you know, it's important to feel it in a healthy way without projecting it onto everybody else in the world. But we really have to, as a society, embrace caring for our emotions instead of the idea of, you know, women being too emotional or men not being sensitive enough kind of thing. I think we need to have that healthy balance where we can allow our emotions to flow through us so that we can move through these experiences in a way that aren't going to it's not going to manifest into something later on in life. It's not going to cause us pain or emotional ailment, physical ailment, whatever that might be. What are some of the ways that we can avoid the suppression of the grief of the emotions in our day-to-day life? I think allowing ourselves to feel it honestly. And one of the things that I, that really rings true for me, music is so powerful. And I think it's one of the things that we can all relate to. And we talk about, you know, play a song that brings you joy, play a song that makes you feel good, but play a song that makes you cry. If you need to cry and you feel like it's stuck, or if you really need to move something, play a song that makes you cry, play heavy metal and feel angry if you need to, you know, whatever you need to do to feel it. So I think that that's a big one is, is for me anyway, that's what seems to work. I think sitting, I think a lot of people have a problem sitting in their emotion. And part of it is that we live in a world of distraction. It's easy to go on our phone and scroll through social media. It's easy to throw a movie on and not pay attention. It is so important to be able to just sit with yourself. And if that's, you know, sitting outside in nature and connecting that way, if it's sitting in your house, if it's even, you know, sitting in the bathtub or a long shower where you're just sitting with yourself and letting yourself feel it instead of being afraid of it, knowing that it's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to feel however you need to feel so that you can move through it and you can self-soothe, which is also a lot of what we didn't learn when we were kids was how to self-soothe, you know, I mean, I can think back to if I was crying or if I was being ridiculous or throwing a temper tantrum as a child, my parents saying, oh, just, you know, I'm out to settle down, relax kind of thing. Instead of like, hey, why are you feeling that way? Move through it. Allow, you know, like, why is, why is this coming up? And I think we need to, as adults now, we need to take ownership of those things and allow them to, to move. <laughs> I'm gonna go get